Hey everybody, this is Riker Rider, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Dragoon. In today's episode, we're finally going to explore the capital of Bilsaso, Deningrad. This is the largest town in Disc 3, and there's a lot to do here. A lot. Matter of fact, we're probably going to be spending the entire episode in this town. Well, there's snow everywhere, of course it's going to be cold. Living in northern Illinois, I'm pretty used to the cold. Matter of fact, I prefer, I prefer zero, like zero Fahrenheit over 100 Fahrenheit. Probably one of the few people around here that does. And I can see how older folk would enjoy hot springs, especially those with, like, arthritis and whatnot, because... <coughs> Excuse me. Because it just relaxes their pain away. Now, one interesting thing about Deningrad is there are no Stardust we can get access to. Yet. And I, yeah, I believe the weapon shop and the item shop are actually in the same building for a change, which is nice. There's a whole bunch of upgrades to get here. I, I believe three or four characters get upgrades here. Tomahawk for Kongol, Spear of Terror for Al, Diamond Claw for Hashel, Breastplate for Kongol, Master's Vest for Hashel, Soul Headband for Hashel. So now he gets SP whenever he's attacked, which is nice. It's a really nice combination. Um, I can't remember if I equipped a jewel. Did I ever equip that jeweled crown? I don't think I did. I should probably do that at some point. Uh, Stardust Boots for Shauna gets her some magic evasion, which is nice. There's some uh, random accessories here. And the Armor of Legend. This is the Legend cast from Lohan, except for physical attacks. And I'm not going to get any of this either, because one, it takes way too much gold to get this, and two, it just completely breaks the game. So, it's essentially an I win button. If you if you spend some time farming those those like birds outside Deningrad, because there's red birds you can run into that give, I believe, a thousand gold. If you can kill those guys in time, it's actually feasible for you to have ten thousand gold, so you can get an armor of legends or somebody. But I would rep but I just don't think it makes the game very fun having one of your characters be virtually invincible to physical attacks. Uh, we can buy healing breezes here, but you know what? I need to clean my inventory out. Uh, we're not going to need the depetrifiers because uh, we're not going to be running into any enemies that can petrify you for a while. Um, let's get rid of this burnout. And we need to get a whole bunch of healing breezes because uh, we're actually not going to be hitting... Um, I guess we do hit another town soon-ish, but not real soon. And I'm probably going to want to clean out my inventory by then again, because because we're going to find some items scattered here and there in the next area or two. So let's figure out what's going on here. Um, we actually want to go to the church last, because there's a handful of things. <laughs> I like this. I like this, how one of, how there's a like a regular here that says it's warm, almost hot, and the guy from Tavaroa says it's freezing cold. The clinics in here, if you ever need it for some reason. Like I said, I think the clinic's worthless. I'm not really a fan of this music track as much as I am the other town, like, the other town tracks. 
but it's okay. Although what would have been nice is um, is if they used a distinctively Russian track for this city, because Deningrad is clearly a Russian name. And, and apparently the country is ruled by five women. It's really nice to see some female leaders in JRPGs. You never really see female leaders anymore. You know, the thing is, the, uh, the, the, pub, the uh, downtown public library in the city I live in is pretty big, too. I've been there a few times to read books, do some research for, like, high school stuff, and a number of other things. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would be boring to a child, but... Oh, yeah. I guess we'll have to wait to get in the castle. Save point there if you need it. I can see how doing research would be boring to a child. What are they doing? Oh. <laughs> I don't know why they I don't know why they just can't do that outside. Maybe the mom is embarrassed to see them doing these things in public? I don't know. Doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, they're just kids. They don't know better. Well, I believe that's everywhere we can go in the town, except for the church building. So, let's check out the Milsiso National Church. Why not? The Divine Tree. We haven't heard that yet. Pay special attention to what the bishop says here, because this contains some really, really important information that makes understanding stuff towards the end of the game a lot easier. Like, seriously, if you pay attention to the events... So, like, all the events that you hear here, the rest of the plot is going to make a lot more sense. The first time I played through this game, I was really skimming through the dialogue, and the end of the game didn't make any sense to me. Oh, also about Deningrad, if you felt that this game has been low on FMVs, you get about 11 billion of them here. Like, I actually think there's more FMVs in Deningrad than there are in the rest of the game. Combined. Yeah, it's gonna take it's gonna take a while. I'm gonna be quiet because this is one of many FMVs uh, in Deningrad. The divine tree is the tree of life. All life comes from this divine tree. In the beginning, nothingness filled the world. Then the Creator saw, descending from the sky. What I don't understand is they've never seen They've supposedly never seen the Divine Tree, so I don't know how they can have such an accurate image of it, you know, you know, in the church. He and his followers created the world. In the end, saw a sowed a seed on the earth. The seed soon grew to be a great tree. The 
great tree bore 108 fruits, and various life forms arose from the ripened fruits. Thus, 108 forms of life were created to fill the world. Yeah, that's kind of a lot to take in. Basically, basically what happened is the creator Soas planted the divine tree in the middle of some in the middle of some podunk nowhere place in in the world. Uh, 108 seeds sprouted from it, each with a, each with their own form of life. And the thing that's really strange is it's evident from the legend that all 108 fruits bloomed at the same time, yet, uh, the one hundred, yet the 108 forms of life, when you put them in order, or at least the ones that the game provides for you, are all increasingly complex. Like, for instance, the first humanoids didn't actually show up until the 97th fruit. Oh yeah, the librarian is back. If you try to go to the Milsiso National Library, it's locked. And the librarian's actually in the church. That's not very nice, Hashel. <laughs> uh, Al's gonna be... You know what? Al reminds me, in this, in this particular town, especially when he's at the library, Al reminds me a lot of Rain from Tales of Symphonia. Like when she gets to when she gets to like a library or some kind of like archaeological digging site, she just goes crazy. And so does Al in this game. And when he was talking about uh, this the uh, divine tree being protected by the signet of Soa. Uh, one of the signet spheres is actually in here. Uh, we'll get into that more... Not... Not immediately, but soon. And don't expect any exciting movies. In the, you know, in the town while they're doing all of this. They're all basically just some NPC talking and showing ancient history, like the Dragon Campaign, or the or about the Divine Tree, or the Moon, or things like that. Nothing exciting like that badass scene with Rose and Zeke and all the old dragoons about halfway through Disc 2. Yeah, there is actually a lot of... There's a lot of stuff to learn here. And if you've been paying attention, this is going to fill a lot of plot holes in. Wingly's. Right, right. Kongle's Giganto, so he doesn't... So he doesn't read, like, human language. So everybody speaks common. Yeah, they have floating cities. What do you expect? If they're that magically inclined, then of course they have floating cities. And if all the Winglies died, I mean, Lennis is a Wingly, so they're clearly they're clearly still alive. Giganto are supposed to be dead, but Kongle's the one left. Viragers are supposed to be gone. Clearly, we're a living legend. I explained this before, but we never were we never were told what the West was. Yeah, the Death Frontier is to the west of the uh, home of Gigantos, but we can't get we can't get there on disc two because there's uh, 
there's a statue in the way. Basically, it's one giant desert. There's nothing out there except monsters, and some treasure, obviously, but... But basically, the land is completely infertile. The Death Frontier is a giant desert. And it's going to be really annoying when we have to go there later. Gee, gee, that isn't all, that isn't at all surprising. Look what happened to a handful of a handful of characters in RPGs like Titus in Final Fantasy X and a handful of other characters. Not just from Final Fantasy games, but from JRPGs in general. The second most powerful. What's number one? Personally, I love dragon designs that act that actually, you know, they're not all powerful like they're supposed to be. They're, they're you know, like they're depicted in, uh, in say, D&D &D and a whole bunch of other places. I love dragon designs where they actually aren't intelligent. Well, you know, they have, like, animalistic intelligence. Yeah, they all... I guess they would all have something to do with the Dragon Campaign. So... Oh, that's awesome. So... So, can you tell us the legend of the Dragon Campaign in its entirety? Looks like she will. Or he, sorry. Now, there are a lot of things that don't make sense in that legend right now, and there are even a handful of things that don't make sense uh, even after you've beaten the game. Like, why would the gods grant Mel Buframa all that power? Like, power that they that Mel Buframa could literally overthrow the gods with. we find out information about the black monster here. In any case, there's a handful of stuff up here. Pretty much all of it excavated from meat. 
And we're going to find out a lot of information about the Black Monster here. These were all things depicted in, uh, in the previous FMVs. The St. Luvia. That's the ghost ship. That's really hard to believe that all of that would... Yeah. Do you think you could maybe arrange a meeting between Sister Luana and us? It would sure be nice to know. You know, some more about the Black Monster. The Black Monster and the Moon Child. We've heard some details about this before, but the librarian is going to explain the legend uh, of the Moon Child and the Black Monster a lot more clearly for us, so pay close attention. Pretty insightful, wouldn't you say? But, hey, this is strange. What's Rose doing in me? Find out next time on Let's Play The Legend of Dragoon. See you later, everybody. <laughs>